Hello, everyone. So, participants, what is our current state or what is our current progress? The current progress right now, we are reached to a stage where we have successfully uploaded our artifacts into S3 via the pipeline. The first end of the pipeline is the developer contributing the code to our version control GitHub. Jenkins taking the responsibility of pulling the latest code. Maven taking the responsibility of the build with regards to packaging the artifact. And we are using Jenkins integrated with another job via the AWS CLI to do a file upload. The reason is very simple. Source code storage is done at a place. Build is done at a place involving Maven. And uploads are done via CLI into S3. Multi-purpose usage because storage is required. Storage is a place where we go ahead and store it. Now it's time for us to get started, participants, to build our cloud resources where we will go ahead and deploy this artifact into our AWS instances. So for that, we will be using tools like Packer and Terraform. Packer is the image builder. It will build your images. Terraform is the one which will go ahead and provision your cloud instances. So participants, what we will do now today is that we will go ahead and start looking at Terraform and Packer. For that, we need those tools to be installed on our machines. We will install Terraform and Packer into our machine and see how Terraform and Packer will work with the, this instances. Or we will go ahead and start using Terraform and Packer and we'll run those instances or we'll provision the instances basically. That is what is the participants, the agenda for today. So participants, what we will do, we will go ahead and start building the Terraform and Packer onto the instance. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm inside my machine. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my machine. I'm going to be using the SSH client. <clears throat> so I need to look for my client. I don't have this client. We just go ahead and navigate to my desktop and run this command. This command will take me into the instance. I'm into the instance. Yes, I'm in my master DevOps machine instance. Step one, admin privileges, assuming the admin privileges. Next, hitting the root folder. So we'll go ahead and do a check for Packer. Packer is not installed on this machine, by the way. Even the Terraform is not installed on this machine. None of them are installed. Now, let's quickly get those tools installed. First, packet installation. <clears throat> we are using Packer open source. So we have to choose the operating system. We are not on a Mac or a Windows or a, we are not on a Windows, we are on a Linux machine. And specifically on open two. So pick this code and I'm also going to add it to my documentation participants. Step one, download the credentials and it's a complete command by the way. Uh, 
No, it's still echo. Okay. And then echo is another command. And then sudo install. after the echo command I think it won't recognize put it in a notepad Okay, packer is installed. You can verify the version of packer. Packer hyphen version, done. Terraform is still pending. Let's move to Terraform page. And we'll go ahead and run the Terraform code on a Linux machine. Then the Terraform updation and installation. Apt update and apt install. So Just to keep my packages updated, I run app-get update minus y. So after this, now Terraform is also installed on this machine. Like Packer, Terraform installation is done. Participants, are we good now, everyone? Participants, are we good? <clears throat> With regards to Packer installation, and Terraform installation. Now, participants, what is the approach that we'll take is, we will go ahead and start first building the Terraform instances. Using Terraform, we'll build our instances, we'll provision our infrastructure. And once the provisioning of the infrastructure is done, what we'll do is we will go ahead and use Packer to build our images. Okay, are we good everyone? Participants, are we good? We'll start with Terraform integration with Jenkins, and then we'll integrate along with Packer. <clears throat> so for this purpose, participants, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my instance. Now, 
in order for jenkins in order for the jenkins to run the terraform code so jenkins need where is the placement of the code it needs to know which part of the code or which part of the project it should know where the code to be used or in in in, a, in, in simple sentences jenkins should know where did you put your terraform code jenkins is required to know to which part of the location where you put your code participants there are various ways but whenever you see the word code and placement of the code always use a version control <clears throat> i would recommend you to go and use a version control like a github.com and start using it so if you can give me a minute let me go ahead and log in with my credential participants just give me a minute No participants, is my screen visible? Is my screen visible to all of you? Yes, come on. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit a folder. And I'm going to go ahead and give a name for TF hyphen beta. So Terraform folder, I've given a name for the project beta. And then I'm just going to add a readme.md file, temporary file. And the branch is going to be master and create a repo. It's a public repo I'll create. I would like to have a copy of this repo on my local machine. Get, get me a copy of this repo, which is an empty repo. It, can you go ahead and clone the empty repo? The repository is clone. Here I will start hosting all of my Terraform code. So I'm going to open up this one from my workspace. TF beta. Empty repo, nothing inside in it. Empty repo. So participants now wait to start. So we are provisioning our instances into AWS cloud involving Terraform. So you all know that it is on registry. You need to visit, pick up your cloud module. It's now AWS cloud. Then you will go ahead and use documentation for picking your AWS cloud. So right now we are focusing on AWS cloud instances. So what we are trying to provision, we are trying to provision AWS instances, AWS underscore instances, or if you're not sure about instances, you'll just go ahead and type in instance. The moment you type instance, you'll find plenty of instances, but instances are not for every instance. Our instances are very specifically easy to instance. So you should be seeing on the top EC2, GE, -E, here it is, EC2. What we are trying to do, we are trying to provision AMI from an instance, or we are trying to provision a simple instance. Here the code is, very much ready-made code. So this is sufficient for you to provision an instance. So pick this instance participants, and it's an empty folder, right? So I'll go ahead and add a new file in it and give a name called main. One name is enough, main.tf. Into this, you'll go ahead and put your code. That's it, guys. With this, your machine, you're, you're capable now to provision a single instance. So let me do some customizations to meet our project need. So participants, there are two blocks that you guys can see. One block is a resource. One block is the data associated to that resource. So 
what i normally request or what i normally do participants or what i am expecting that i don't want to go and use any specific images i want to use my own ami so what i'll do i'll drop this reference i'm not going to use this resource my plan is i want to have at least two instances that means two blocks of code one for one instance web one instance other one is a second instance number two instance participants if you use t3.micro still you are in pre tier limit but i would request you guys to continue with t2.micro as well if you are not sure about the sizes just always remain in t2.micro to keep your cost low you can use t2 and t3 so for standard purpose i'm using t2.micro t2.micro remember by default it is free tier so you shouldn't get charges for it now in the resource section it is asking you to go ahead and use an ami but we don't have anything related to ami i will just borrow it from my console i'll go ahead and ask under amis i don't want to use any other ami i want to use my amis i don't have any ami none let me go ahead and choose from the catalog i'm very specific about say ubuntu because we are using ubuntu as our os so we found one os here and i'm choosing this ami id so instead of using this i'm going to go ahead and replace this one you put it in double quotes it recognizes this put it in double quote it recognizes this so uh, this is the ami very specifically i want to use i want to go ahead and put the references for it t2.micro but means there is another way to do this you know there is another way to do this. instead of passing direct values you can create a folder or file called vars.tf or variables.tf in this variables.tf what you can do is you can go ahead and create variables what are those variables very simple variable variable the moment you type in it becomes a variable variable called ami okay and another variable we can create. or variable dot instance underscore type what are the default values that i want to pass i want to pass this default value what is the default value you should go and consider t2 dot micro you should only consider this so instead of changing values every time in the resource section you can pass this way of getting the reference done or you can pass in this way also ami equals var dot am that means it's a variable that you are calling ami equal to var dot am same way you can go ahead and use instance type Instance type is equal to var dot instance underscore type instance underscore type because these are variables that we have created. Instead of changing value every time, just go ahead and change at one place. That's under variables. You can go ahead and change. So now instead of doing this. let's go and copy this way so we are passing variables here ami equal to variable dot ami ami equal to variable so if you change the value in variables one time you need to change it picks up all those values ami equal to var dot am instance type participants are we good participants are we good so this is our first instance instance 
zero one. And let me go ahead and consider instance zero two. So the code is written now for two instances, web one, web two with instance type, and the variables are given are AMI and t2.micro. So this is a code that I've written. I'll make this code available via the terminal into my github.com. So git, add these changes. Git, can you commit these changes? What is commit? I'm making all the commits. That is code added for Terraform. I just added the code for Terraform and I'm asking Git. I'm ready with my code. Push these changes from my local towards upwards origin branch. You sh should consider this master. So everyone, can you visit my AWS cloud, sorry, my URL here, participants, can you see the code? Participants, could you confirm the code? There will be a main.tf file, there will be variables.tf file. The simplest file, which has two instances, one and two, and two variables, AMI ID and instance. Participants, do you see this code available here on this URL? Is this correct? Yes, Kumar, we can see those things. Correct. Now, what is the complexity in this? It is nothing. It's just a set of two instances. One, two instances. For that instances, he asked me to give AMI. I'm giving AMI of my choice. Size, I want to not get build t2.my. Instead of giving them as direct values, we just keep them as a Variable, that's all. Participants, is this complex that you can't understand? Participants, is this so complex that you can't understand? Everyone, are we good? Participants, are we good? Yes, come on. Don't worry, this code is publicly available. Anybody on the internet can use this. Even you can use this code, no problem. Now, what is my plan is if this code is ready, can Jenkins read this code for me? I want my Jenkins to read this code for me. What I'm gonna do now is participants, I'm gonna go ahead and ask my Jenkins. Participants, where is my Jenkins? On my master machine, the Jenkins is running. I'm gonna pick this public DNS. I'm going to go ahead and do port 8080. Now I'm on the welcoming page for Jenkins. Let me go ahead and do a login. Do a sign in. Now I already built the artifact. File is getting uploaded. Now, out of the box, keeping those blockers or keeping these, uh, what are not blockers? These are jobs aside. Let's focus on our job. What is our job? Our job is to build artifact using Jenkins. So let me put the new step that is uh, provision. I want to provision resources using Terraform for the project beta. Okay, so I would like uh, a freestyle job to be considered because I can customize according to my need. Description. This Jenkins job is expected to do the following. One, pull the code from github.com which is my GitHub Terraform code.
build or uh, provision EC2 instances from Terraform code. Okay, so this is what I am expecting from Jenkins involving Terraform code. So let's get started. So source code. I already make it, made it ready for you people. The source code is available here in this repo. It's a git repo, correct? What is the URL? This is a URL. Do you have any credentials? It's public repo. Public repos don't need username and passwords or any kind of credentials, not required. Even you can use my public URL. No problem with it. What is a branch? Master, yes, we have a master branch. Double confirm, we have a master branch. Scroll down, what makes your build trigger at this moment? Let me keep the control under, let me get the control under my under myself so that whenever I need it, I'll provision it. If I don't need it, I will not provision it. Let it be wherever it is. Build environment steps. Yes, I have some steps for you. What are the steps is I want to run commands. The commands in Terraform participants, it's only one command or to start with Terraform, we will just go ahead and do an initialization. And then we go ahead and say Terraform, can you apply the changes? Remember this command, Terraform apply. And one automatic approval you will give, saying that I'm giving you an approval get started. Now, what will happen is that Terraform will go ahead and start provisioning, but there are certain dependencies that you will come to know after this. Let's, let's do one. Let's fail from the job and let's learn from what Terraform is expecting more from your job. With whatever the code that I can write, I had, I have written the code. I know what are the more dependencies that Terraform is looking for, but instead of me doing it, let you guys learn from the fail. Let's fail from the job and learn from the job. Now what I'm going to do, since it is under my control, I'll build it whenever I need it. I build it. Let's see what is going to happen now. Okay, cool guys. I was expecting that it will be asking region, but it didn't ask me the region. I think it has considered the region as Ohio only, but let's go ahead and confirm where are these instances? The instance uh, 2F7, EF0. Let's go ahead and look for those instances. Go to instances tab of your console. Cool guys, 2F7, BF0 are the two instances that actually got provision into my account. Can I have a quick round of confirmation from all of you participants now, how Jenkins has done the job? Instead of me doing the job, Jenkins has done the job. Can you guys relate how did Jenkins do all this? Can you guys relate how did Jenkins did I this? By using Terraform course. Exactly. So Jenkins participants, remember Jenkins will do the job when you ask it to do a job via the commands or basically Jenkins is designed to run your commands or job. All those commands that you expect are in the form of a job. So this is a job that I have created. Gave provision hyphen TF hyphen beta, the name of the job and gave certain commands to it asking Jenkins get the code from GitHub, it did get the code and it started to go ahead and run the command apply. 
because of this two commands it started to run the job for me so where did i how did i what kind of code i have written code is very simple code the simplest code i have written asking code and give me two instances with this ami id and the size t2 dot micro because this is free tier and this is also free tier so i will not be getting billed for this are you able to relate everyone hello participants are we good yeah any challenges anything which is not clear may i revisit the explanation one more time for you people see jenkins is something is expected to do without me doing the job i am expecting jenkins should do the job for me. why manually getting the things is not recommended manually i don't want i want jenkins to take the call i want jenkins to run the terraform code i want jenkins to provision my instance let jenkins do the job for me so for that purpose what i have done i have asked jenkins to run the terraform code so jenkins ran the terraform code for me so what kind of code i gave i gave the simplest code saying that i have two instances to be provision jenkins and the terraform code is here two instances and i requested jenkins that please apply on my behalf yes and the job for you may I have a quick round of confirmation now participants if this is very clear participants are we good yes come on now the next challenge that i have to address is this that terraform is doing a job for me provisioning instances but the question still or the scenario is very much incomplete the scenario what i want to deliver is this that application should be able to instance see why are we creating instances because inside that instance our application should be running now just go ahead and ask the instance which were created by terraform terraform instances are these two one 01 and 02 any of the instance public ip private ip pub, public ip public dns anything and do a resolution for port 8080 and ask hey are you running my app one thing is for sure it won't be running see clearly it gave up saying that no i i don't have anything like my app on port 80 no can you tell me people why is that my app is not running in this why is that my app is not running in this instance anyone we have not uploaded that in the emi mm -hmm. no before emi what is the simplest reason that why is this my application is not running that we are not uploaded in the terraform code we have not mentioned that line correct so the terraform code is just a code to provision instance See, nowhere did i mention any called anywhere in this 19 lines of code did i mention anywhere my app deployment did i deploy anywhere my app did i declare anywhere my app nowhere then how does terraform do all that stuff for you now participants understand what terraform is terraform is expected to go ahead and provision your instances now terraform is not going to do anything so what should we do now we should do now manually see what is a manual effort look at my manual effort go to my instance terraform instance connect to that instance See how manually I have to do. 
and even put a timer part put some timer to it see how much time i have to invest for this anyone wants to put a time or 711 right so 710 let's answer that right now see step 1 take admin privileges step 2 hit the root folder step 3 make sure that the application is updated so it is like up to date the environment is up to date see the process very lengthy process now i'm have to update participants what more is required for me to run my application my app what should i go ahead and do in order to get my application my app think for a minute for running war packages what should i do i should have tomcat installed apt i can get install tomcat 9 minus y see the process very lengthy process manual effort manually i'm investing time on this done participants where is that we should go and run our war packages in tomcat cd war hope you guys remember it lib tomcat web apps folder now where is our artifact where is our artifact participants for the project uh, now in s3 bucket participants where is our artifact s3 see the process how lengthy is my process now manually i have to go ahead and get this data from s3 go to console right click go to s3 <clears throat> from there uh i kept in my devops bucket the file my app what i'll do i'll go ahead and say hey machine can you get from this location the artifact so it is forbidden forbidden in the sense it might not be a public file so let me keep the permissions public should be downloadable now we run the download how it is download so participants now finally after connecting updation installation tomcat installation file download steps i should be able to resolve now the application okay the code is now working after how many how much effort i had to go ahead and you know hit the changes build the code deploy now participants see one more time i will do for you i will go ahead and make some changes in the code see the process of how lengthy is my process i'll go ahead and go to my beta folder my master branch now i'm a developer i'll go to my code git as a developer so now i'm taking this this guy role see the one who is sitting on the left hand side
participants do not worry i'll explain you every line by line every line by line that is possible now the code is not available let me just go and do a switch you go and switch to uh master oh we are already on master git go and switch to developer branch now i'll explain you one by one participants so participants where we have to start from now we have to start taking the role of a developer so i am I have taken the role of a developer what is my version control git what is the name of the repo d e t a b t the name of the repo now i'll make some changes in the source code this is my source code very simple java code i've written very very simple java code and you don't need to go and remember all this java code and let me just go ahead and line and say hello world this one is welcome to aws devops now so what should i do now i should go ahead and say git add all the changes that i have committed from my side git can you commit hyphen m the latest changes that i have done participants try to keep a blind eye what i am trying to do here this is not your cake because this is a developer role so this part this is the exact scenario i am trying to do i am trying to go ahead and make the updates in the version control if you are not understanding that's okay because you are not a developer i am the developer i'm just making some changes in the code done with the changes the so participants what i have done i am done with the version control changes now what should i do participants in order to get my artifact what is my next step what is as a devops engineer what should i do now as a devops engineer what should i do now as a devops engineer what i am supposed to do as a devops engineer now i have to start provisioning things using jenkins ask jenkins hey jenkins can you pull the latest code build the project get me the artifact store the artifact into s3 participants are we clear everyone the stages that i have to do as part of the version control involving jenkins everything before that i'll ask a question for you participants are we clear at this process at this process the developer has made changes in the github repo are we good participants any questions here participants are we good at this scenario are we good with the changes everyone yes kumar any questions here now well, the good thing is even if you don't understand what i have done here no problem because i have taken the role of a developer i am making the changes as a developer some changes in the source code java code if you are not understanding that's okay that's not your cake that you you don't no need to you don't need to go ahead and focus on what i have done this is my role i have done it now this is from here participants it's your role this integration is your role now what i am supposed to do as a devops engineer or what you guys are supposed to do step 1 pull the code step 2 build the code generate the artifact step 3 run another job pull the artifact number 3 and do a file upload into s3 can we do using jenkins now participants shall i go ahead and do with regards to jenkins okay now i am going back to my jenkins 
as a devops engineer now i am a devops engineer i have to go to my jenkins ask jenkins jenkins you are required to do two steps step 1 to pull the code build the code and generate the artifact step 2 which is the job number 2 will do a file upload let's go ahead and get it done i would like to go ahead and start it build now that means build now will start the build process it does pull the latest code yes latest code is pulled after that it will start the next job which is the file upload job number 2 file upload is done file upload is done the latest application file is done downloaded so now confirm on s3 s3 did you get the latest file downloaded latest file uploaded not downloaded latest file down uploaded 722 722 participants the latest file got uploaded at 722 is that a confirmation for all of you people see how powerful is my jenkins jenkins is pulling the latest code as part of my devops engineering cleaning the package generating the artifact building the artifact uploading into s3 everything is done by jenkins participants now participants are we good participants are we good hmm. now what yes. is the next step what is the next step is deploy this into our aws instances so for that instances what did i use terraform i used provision the instances but when it comes to deployment i am doing it manually what is that manual deployment i am going to that instance manually i am doing all the things i am going to that ec2 terraform instance logging into the terraform instance not recommended installation of tomcat not recommended now this is the previous artifact i had a previous artifact i'll remove my app hyphen r my app this is not recommended but i'm showing you the purpose of doing this see not recommended actually like if i should not even log into that instance if not log in how will i go and do deployment that's the question i want to make you understand the scenario that i want you to understand now i'll go to my s3 bucket say hey this is the latest code right let me get the latest code please let me go ahead and get the latest code so w get can you get me the latest code into my terraform instance this is actually not participant don't practice this this is just only to tell you show you how much effort i need to put see i am putting a lot of effort in connecting installing downloading see i am downloading the latest artifact from s3 and now if you go and do a refresh it will go and show you the changes let me just go ahead and confirm my app dot war file ec2 instance what is a public ip you can use public ip public dns anything colon 8080 slash my app still referring to the previous file somewhere it is different to the previous file participants let me remove one more time okay now if i do a page refresh it's still referring to the previous code b 
Give me one second. Huh? Let me double check. Let's hyphen AL. I'm trying to get the latest code. I'm not able to get it. Let me try one more time. Get the latest code or latest artifact from S3. Uh, w get. Can you get the latest code for me? Hope this time it does pull the latest code for me. EC2 instance. Can you confirm the latest code? Mm -hmm. Why it is giving me the previous code? Where is the dependency case? Let me double check. I think it's still getting the previous code. Beta? Can you let us know the changes? Beta branch is developed. Guys, funniest, funniest thing from my side. I have added the changes, I've committed the changes, but I haven't pushed these changes. So cute. It push hyphen you origin. Now there should be a branch that branches develop branch. And now I'm gonna go ahead and push these changes. Done. The latest changes are expected to come and hit my system. The branch. Yeah, just 20 develop branch. Latest commits. I push these changes now. The changes are visible. Okay. Now, one more time, I'll do the build. So it is my mistake that I did not push these changes. Build now, we'll go ahead and build by pulling the latest code from GitHub. As a developer, I forgot to commit and push. I did not push that. After pushing, it will pull the code. It will build the code using Maven. It will generate the artifact. And job number two will automatically pick the latest code from Jenkins and upload it to my S3 bucket. Now I'll go back to my EC2 instance, which is created manually, or oh, sorry, using Terraform it is created. And I'll remove all these app files, which are the previous files. Now I'm gonna get the latest code. Participants, you don't need to practice this. One more time, I'm telling you, I'm doing this participants. The reason for doing this is to show you how much manual effort will be put in if you go ahead and do this process. Though Terraform is doing the job of launching an instance, Terraform is launching an instance. But when it comes to application running inside the Terraform, it's a manual effort that I'm doing which is not recommended. This is not recommended. Like see, 
I'm downloading the file into that instance. Now I'm expecting the changes. Cool, because I forgot to add these changes here. Now participants, you can see the changes now. So manually, how much effort is from my side? First, let your Terraform to create instances. Terraform EC2 instances are created. How many number, two in number, two instances. Then what I have to do, I have to connect to two instances. Then what I have to do, I have to install Tomcat in all those two instances. And then after installation, what I have to do now, I have to go ahead and download manually, download the um, S3 bucket artifacts. That two, two times, every time, whenever. Participants, this is kept in mind that I have created two instances in Terraform. Tomorrow, Terraform will expand it to 10 instances. I have to do 10 times this process. Am I right, participants? Every instance, if I'm trying to do this process, tomorrow, two instances, day after tomorrow, 10 instances. Now, this process will keep on continuing every time so is there a standard way to get the things done in order to get the latest code and get it done? Is there anything that can I can go and package everything at a place to get all these jobs done? Mr. Packer. Mr. Packer is going to pack everything for you. It will launch an instance for you. It will install a Tomcat for you. It will download the artifact for you. It will go ahead and bundle everything package for you and create a new AMI for you. Using that AMI, you launch one instance, maybe two, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 100 using Terraform. Tell Terraform, hey Terraform, there is someone at the back, Mr. Packer, who's gonna help me to build images for me. And using these images, Terraform, you get into action for me. You go ahead and get into action for me. So Terraform is going to await till Packer build and packages everything in the form of an AMI. That AMI, I will pass it to Terraform, which will go ahead and provision this. Case. So this way, manually, I don't need to do even a single task. Now, how Packer does this? How Packer will work in AWS, how to integrate Packer in AWS is something that is the agenda for our next session. Participants, are we good at this moment?